What's up guys, it's Cliff with Trail Grid Pro back with you today. We're gonna to be throwing in an anytime backup and new front camera kit in this 2020 Toyota Tacoma. The anytime kit gives you the ability to toggle between your factory backup camera and a new front camera that we're gonna install with a flick of a switch. It's a great factory style looking switch, which we're gonna install right over here on the left hand side of the dash console in this Toyota Tacoma. Fits perfectly. So let's real quick think about practical applications of using the anytime switch. Of course, if you're in the city and you're parking, maybe in a parking garage or parallel parking, and you want to see how close you really are to that car in front of you, you can switch on the front camera with a switch just to see how close you are. And of course, backup camera, if you put it in reverse, will work as normal. But if you want to take a quick peek at any time at what's going on behind you, you can flick the switch and have a look. Obviously, tons of benefits on the trail. If you got an obstacle in front of you you want to take a look at, just go ahead and flick the switch and you're going to be able to see what's right in front of you. Same thing in reverse. On the trail, you got something back there, a tree, a rock, who knows? You can flick the switch and avoid any obstacles that may be behind you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this install. Okay, so we have all of our components out on the table. We're gonna try to make this as easy as possible to show you how everything gets hooked up. So we're gonna start with the camera. So we're gonna imagine that we're at the front of your vehicle. You have your camera with a wire. It has a couple of colored loops in it. And this connector here we're gonna take the long extension cable that has the RCA on one end, this black connector on the other. So your camera wire, we're gonna turn this around. There's an arrow on it. We just gotta get the arrows lined up. You will feel that click together. So this long RCA extension is what's gonna, you're gonna run through and into your truck. So, on one end, you're gonna have an RCA with a pigtail, and then you're gonna have a red and a black wire. The red wire, you can cap off or tape up. That's not gonna be used. The black wire is gonna be grounded. We're gonna ground it somewhere in the engine bay. All of the black wires are gonna be grounded. And then the pigtail off of the RCA is gonna be connected to the green wires here in a minute. This is the only instance in this install where you're not gonna connect light colored wire to light colored wire. All right, so we're gonna leave this right here on the table for right now. We're gonna grab the relay switch. You're gonna have a green and a black wire coming off of that. We're gonna set those to the side for right now. And then you'll see we have three RCA jacks. The wire, the extension wire that we had just a second ago is going to plug into one of the RCA jacks. Now, if you notice the kit already comes with one jack with a little black mark on it, you wanna connect your extension wire into the one that does not have a black mark on it. Leaves you with two RCAs, a male and a female. You have this other harness. It's gonna have, it's gonna be the only other one with RCAs on it. And we're just gonna match up the RCAs. There's one male, one female on each side. So pretty simple there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the twist tie off of this. And we'll go ahead and take the twist tie off of our other harness. So now in these two loomed sets here, we have coming off of both of our harnesses you're gonna see that we have a gray and a blue, and an orange and a red. And then off of our relay, we have a green and a black. Like we said a second ago, this pigtail off of the long extension with the RCA is gonna end up getting connected to green. And then if you see, we have a wiring harness for our toggle switch. We have all the same colors. We have a black, orange, red, blue, green, and gray. So we have here our green wire. We're gonna take our switch and the green wire and that one red wire from the RCA, those are gonna get tied together. We recommend solder and shrink tubing if you have butt connectors or however you need to do it, but we always recommend solder and shrink tube. It's just a more secure, permanent connection. We're gonna take our black wire 
with our black wire off of the switch harness. Those are gonna get tied together. Again, the black wires need to be grounded. So if you need to put some sort of a connector or something on the end, but they definitely need to be grounded. And these will be grounded inside of the truck behind the radio. So that leaves us now with an orange and a red and a blue and a gray. So our orange and our red from our one harness, match those up and blue and gray from our other. We're gonna match those up and secure those wires. All right, so that's about it. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and assemble this and we'll show you what the completed assembly looks like. And then we'll go ahead and install it in the truck. All right, so we're back at the table. We've gone ahead and wired, soldered, shrink tube, connected everything. So we'll go ahead and walk through it one more time just to show you what uh, it looks like. So again, starting from the camera, we have the camera, the black connector, fits in there and we have our red and black wire that come out the other side of that harness. We've gone ahead and added a connector there so we can ground that out on the black wire. And like we said, the red wire is not being utilized in this situation. So we're gonna go ahead and just cap it off. Uh, we, we cut the end and then capped it off with some shrink tubing there. We're gonna follow our long extension RCA, have our RCA connected and like I said, our red wire is going to be connected to our two green wires, one coming off the switch and the other one's coming from our harness. All of the wires coming from the switch are connected. Did the same thing. We put a little connector there with some solder and shrink tube on our black wire so we can ground those. Our blue is connected to blue, green to green, gray to gray and orange to orange, red to red. Have our relay, and then our other two RCAs are connected there. So that's what it should look like. Like I said, pretty straightforward. The only time that you're not gonna match color to color is you have the two greens and the one red, they're all getting tied together. So let's go ahead and get the truck in here and we'll go ahead and get this installed and take a look. All right, guys, Brian here. We're gonna go ahead and get started on this install on the Tacoma. So first thing we're gonna get, we're gonna get all of our stuff out of the bag. Just real quick, you do have two options when you order this kit from us. You can either order it completely disassembled or you can go ahead and get us to go ahead and put all the connectors, put all the wires together. So that way when it hits your door, it is absolutely plug and play. So we've already gone ahead and assembled the kit. First thing we need to do is we need to get access behind the head unit here. So on these Tacomas, this whole bezel with the vents and everything just pops straight off. So all we need to do is just apply a little bit of pressure. See this whole dash trim comes right off. i set that to the side and then we're going to get our old trusty 10 millimeter socket out. Hopefully you can find yours. And there's four bolts that hold the head unit on. So we're gonna go ahead and take these off. Obviously you don't have to have one of these to do this job, but it makes it a little easier. And we'll place them right there in the cup holder. All right, so now we're gonna do is pull the head unit straight out. We're gonna go ahead and use a microfiber and lay it over the shifter so we don't scratch anything. And we're gonna rest the head unit right here for right now. So the next thing we're gonna do, I showed you the two factory looking connectors. What we're gonna be doing in this application, since we have to put the switch to the left of the steering column, is we're actually gonna run the two white factory looking connectors up under the steering column and bring them out right here behind the dash and make the connections because the relay the switch plug and all of the other wires in this application are going to live up under the the dash here now if your truck you have blanks that are right here behind the shifter you won't need to do that all of your wiring can live right here behind the dash but like i said since the switch has got to go over here we need to make sure that all the wires make it all the way across the dash so next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how we got the wires run up through the dash. So we'll be coming around to the driver's side of the truck. 
All right, so here on the driver's side of the truck, we've gone ahead and taken off the sill plate from right here. And then that gives us access to the cover panel here. Now, the way that this is held in is right here, there's a little black retainer clip. So you just need to uh, unscrew that and then this piece comes out. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this bottom trim piece because we need to get access because you can see the blank is right here. This is where we're gonna end up putting our camera switch. So we need to go ahead and get to the back of that anyway. So to get access to that, right behind this side kick trim, you can see there's a one bolt. There's this one silver bolt that goes right there. And then there's two screws. These are Phillips head with a 10 millimeter on them as well. So go ahead and remove the two screws in this bolt. And then all we have to do is just pull down on both sides then this trim piece is gonna drop off. So we're gonna go ahead and hang this back up just for a second. So, here you can see the rest of our wiring harness. So what we've done here is we, off camera, we went ahead and took the, like I said, the two white plugs. And if you run them up the back here, you, it may take two people, unless you have really nimble fingers. That, If you, can, if you can kind of see my hand, there's a space that goes right up here, kind of behind the, the, the start stop button, and we'll end up up here. That's where we've run our wires to. So we went ahead and ran these. So like I said, here's our two plugs. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make the connections with our anytime backup kit. So like I said, we've already run the wires up through for these two plugs. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the gray plug out of the back of the head unit and the white plug. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect them to our anytime kit. Remember these are keyed plugs. So if you see that one doesn't go in then try the other one. All right, and then the gray one was all the way to the passenger side. And then we're gonna connect our white connector. And then we're gonna put the white connector back in the middle. Heard them pop into place there. All right, so that's all the wiring that we need to do here in the back of the head unit. So we can go ahead and put this back in place and then resecure it with the four 10 millimeter bolts. All right, and while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our trim bezel. So we're just gonna put this back into place and then give it a firm push. All right, there we go. Heard it snap back into place. Now we're gonna move down to the footwell and we're gonna deal with connecting the rest of the wires there. All right, so we're gonna move back over here to the driver's footwell. As you can see, remember we popped our, the panel off. So while we have it out, we're gonna be utilizing this blank right here. So on the back, just a couple of tabs and the blank comes out. And then we're gonna go ahead and install our new switch. So you see front camera and rear, literally just going to push that into place, give it a nice test. Everything moves freely. And then we're going to work on the rest of our wires here. So you can see we have our wires coming down from behind the head unit. All right. So we can see we have our plug here for the switch. So here's the back of our camera switch. We're gonna go ahead and plug that in. All right, so the plug for the switch is in. Go ahead and tidy up our wires a little bit, make sure we have them where we need to be. Okay. 
go ahead and snap this panel back into place. Make sure we fit it. Make sure we fit it properly back around the airbag. And then we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our two screws. These don't have to be super tight. They're just holding the plastic trim piece on. So now what we should be left with, we should have our long wire that's gonna to go to the front of the truck to connect to our camera. And then you're gonna have a long grounding wire. All right, so where we're gonna ground this wire out is right here. You can actually see the customer has something else installed already and they've chosen that as a grounding site. So we're gonna go ahead and use that as well. All right, so we pulled off, that's actually a 10 millimeter nut as well. So we just loosened it up and then we put our spade connector behind there and tightened everything back down. All right, so now that we have our wire grounded out, it's time to run our cable all the way to the front of the truck. And as you can see right here, there's a hole cut in the carpet and there's actually a firewall grommet right there so what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the engine bay. We're going to find that grommet and we're going to go ahead and push our wire fish through. And then we're going to tie the cable off and go ahead and pull it through into the engine bay. Okay, so we're back here in the engine bay on the driver's side. I uh, went ahead and got my wire fish out. If you don't have one of these, not the end of the world, but these are pretty inexpensive tools that come in really handy for something like this. If you have a coat hanger or a stick or something, uh, you can use that instead. But if we look down here, right down along the firewall and the driver's side fender, we'll see the grommet that we were looking at from the inside. And here's that wire that we actually saw was already passed through. So what I'm gonna try to do is we're gonna stick the wire fish in right next to that and get it all the way into the footwell. Well, there, passed through. We're gonna set the wire fish to the side and we're gonna go in and see if we can find our wire. So here's, I found our wire fish. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna untangle this wire. And what we wanna find is this black connector. That's where the camera is gonna connect. All we're gonna do is we're gonna tape this to the end of the wire fish and then we're gonna pull it through carefully. This connector should go through without a problem. When we get to this connector, however, we wanna be a little bit more careful. Uh, it's a little wider than this one. So let's go ahead and tape this up. All right, so we have our end of our wire tape. So let's go back to the engine bay. All right, so we're gonna gently, slowly pull on our wire fish. All right, so there's the first connector. So like I said, that one should come through pretty easy. All right, and there's our second connector. So this, this one was pretty easy, to be honest with you, because like I said, the customer already has some other aftermarket lighting installed on its rig. If you don't, and this is the first time that you're putting something through the firewall grommet, you may need to take a small knife, like an X-Acto knife or a razor blade, and just cut a small X in the grommet to be able to pass your wire fish through. Uh, but like I said, this, this one already had an opening, so we just went with it. Okay, so we went ahead and untaped the end of our wire here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull some through. And then we also have this red and black wire. We wanna pull it all the way through. Uh, at the very end, you'll find another small black wire with a spade attachment on it. Uh, that we need to ground this in the engine bay. So we wanna make sure we pull all of that through and we wanna make sure we have enough. This wire needs to end up here towards the front middle of the truck because that's where the camera is gonna connect. 
All right, so now we've pulled our slack. So what, what I like to do is we're gonna try to hug it as close to the fender uh, and everything just to keep it nice and tidy. So what we can do, is we're just gonna work this back. There's a bracket here on the fuse box. And we're gonna run this wire right here by the battery in the fuse box. And we're gonna go behind the driver's side headlight. And then there's a gap here between this uh, plastic shroud and the upper bumper cover. I'm just gonna keep working this through until we get it kind of near the hood latch and the front of the truck. We're just gonna let it hang out right here for right now while we tidy the rest of this up and we're gonna go ahead and make our ground connection because the next step beyond that, we're gonna pull off this upper bumper cover. So let's go back here. We're gonna work our ground through as well. Again, just keeping everything nice and tidy. Actually, we can just pull the slack from the other connector. There we go. And then probably the easiest spot, as you see, there's this factory grounding uh, screw right here. Usually there's just the factory grounding, but like I said, we have a lot of aftermarket stuff going on. So we're gonna, but we're gonna go ahead and use it anyway. So let me get the 10 millimeter and we'll make that happen. All right, we're just gonna loosen this up enough to where we can get our other ground. Get them all back in there. And we're gonna slowly tighten this back down. All right, got our ground attached. Like I said, we're just gonna leave this wire here for now until we get our camera where we want it and then we'll pull all of the rest of the slack uh, back towards the cab and get that all tidied up. All right, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this upper bumper, the grill area. So on, on this style grill, it's this is super simple to take this part off. If you look, we have a push tab there. There's one 10 millimeter here, one 10 millimeter at the top here, and another clip on the other side. So I'm just gonna lift up, pull these out. And just pop right out. Take off these two 10 millimeters. All right, so if we look right here on the grill support, you can see there's this wire that runs through for the uh, collision avoidance that's in the emblem. So we just need to push the connectors. You may need a pair of needle nose pliers or something to depress the tabs. All right. So we got that down out of the way. Go ahead and actually disconnect the harness plug. All right, go ahead and disconnect the plug. Using the top, you're gonna grab the front of the grill and it pulls straight out. The bottom is just held in with these tabs here that slide into corresponding slots on the front of the truck. So we're gonna take this over to the bench and we're gonna mount our camera. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and show you what we did off camera for mounting the actual camera itself. So if we look, we're right here behind the Toyota emblem on the back side of the grill. Uh, what we did, we went ahead and found the middle point between here and here. Obviously your grill may be different. Uh, if you don't have this grill, if you have the TRD Pro grill, obviously the, your setup's a little different. Just find a place that you wanna mount the camera 
But what we ended up doing, because this area here that holds the emblem on actually had this connector here that wasn't being used for anything. And there's nothing behind it. So what we ended up doing is actually just cutting out this piece to make room for the stem on the, uh, the threaded stem on the camera. So used a, a, a drill bit to make a hole. Uh, it recommends a 5 16 drill bit, but obviously use whatever you have to do to make it happen. And then thread the camera wire through the hole. There are a couple of small gasket looking things that come in your kit. If you notice they have, there, there's a flat one, there's one with a little bit of angle, there's one with a lot of angle. So just pick the one that you need. You can actually use those to adjust the camera uh, just ever so slightly. So that goes on between the camera and the mounting surface. Like I said, the wire goes through the hole first and then slip the nut over the wire and work it down and then just thread it on and then go ahead and tighten that down so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this grill assembly back on the truck. We'll finish making our connections to our wiring harness. We'll tidy everything up and then we'll give it a test. All right, so to put this grill on, like I said, we're, these tabs here along the bottom just slide into these slots. I'm just going to go ahead and line it up. Really no no effort required to do that. So if you're pushing and it's not going in, it means it's caught on something. We're gonna go ahead and line our upper holes there. We're gonna grab our screws and our pop clips. We're gonna go ahead and put the pop clips back in on each side. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the two screws Snug those down. Again, they don't have to be super tight. You're just going into a plastic. All right. All right, so now we have our camera wire. And here's the wire that we ran from the cab of the truck. All we need to do is go ahead and make this connection. And if you look, if you look very closely, there's actually two arrows on there, but you'll see there's a an indicating spot there. Line the two arrows up, go ahead and push those together. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab some tape. I always recommend taping up the connections just to make sure that we don't have to worry about water. All right, so we got our connection taped up. It's all nice and secure there. Now, if you notice right up from that connection, we have three loops of wire. You have a white, a green, and a purple. And included in your kit comes this little guide here. All right, so we have ours mounted in the vertical mounting position. Now, when we test it here in a minute, you, we may notice that the, the image is flipped or mirrored from how it should look. So if we need to reverse that mirroring effect, we're gonna cut the loop in the white wire. And then these cameras also come factory set up with the grid lines, like how you would have grid lines on your backup camera. So if, if you wanna keep your grid lines, go ahead and leave the green loop. If you wanna remove the grid lines, we're gonna cut the loop on the green wire. And then you notice purple there too. Um, purple is if you have it in the horizontal mounting position, uh, to go ahead and correct the mirror issue there. So we're going to go ahead and go inside. Everything's hooked up. We're going to go ahead and give it a test and see how it works. All right, so we have everything hooked up. Everything's buttoned up. All the wires are cleaned up on the bottom, up under here under the footwell and in the engine bay. So we only have one thing left to do, and we're going to go ahead and test the camera. So we went ahead and put the truck in accessory mode. You can see we have our switch right here where the customer had a blank left. So nice, clean factory look. So we're gonna go ahead and click it up to the front position. And as you can see there, it displays exactly what's in front of the truck. You can see the edge, the front edge, that's like the license plate part of the bumper. So a pretty good fish eye view, um, not just right in front of the truck, but kind of a panoramic all the way around. Now keep in mind that like we talked about a second ago, off camera, I went ahead and checked the configuration and it originally had grid lines there. So I went ahead and snipped the green wire 
up there by the camera. And then the image was also flipped. It was mirrored. So I went ahead and cut the white wire as well. So now our, our image is just how you would see it out of the front of your truck. And I, it's really, I think is a really clear, it's a good picture. Definitely is gonna make parking or seeing whatever's in front of you a whole lot better. So we can go ahead and we'll put it back in the neutral position. You can see that the factory navigation uh, infotainment screen comes up and then we're gonna go ahead and put it in rear put the switch in rear and then you see the factory reverse camera show up and then we can even toggle straight and go right back to front. So really on the flick of a switch and we're gonna go ahead and start the truck and we'll show you that it also works during normal operation. So you see the Toyota screen resets because we restarted the truck. We're gonna give it a minute to cycle through All right, so we see the factory infotainment screen show up. We're gonna go ahead and put the truck in reverse. Just as we would think, the reverse camera comes on. And now the other cool thing is with the relay in this system is if you click it into front, it'll actually override the rear camera and, and do the front as well. So it's in the neutral, back in the neutral setting. So it works as it should. All right, so installation's complete and everything seems to be working well. So now we're just gonna give it back to the customer. If you wanna pick one of these up for your Toyota Tacoma, go ahead and head over to the shop at www.trailgridpro.com. And like always, have a blast out there.